What's up you guys? This is Nicole Glass out here in a park on this beautiful February day. And I actually asked you guys over on YouTube if you have any questions about photography, about life, about anything in general. So I'm just gonna sit down and answer a few of those questions. Question, how do you prepare yourself for a video and how do you plan it? Do you make a script or do you just do it spontaneously? Well, right now I don't have a script. I didn't prepare at all. I'm actually just reading off the questions and coming up with answers that are in my head, but it's a mix. I do have some videos that I have scripted, uh, especially videos where I'm getting like really technical and I just wanna make sure that everything is correct. But then there are other videos where I just have bullet points, especially like list style videos, like 10 ways to make passive income with photography. Like that one I did not have scripted. I just had, you know, those 10 bullet points and then I would go through them and talk freely. But again, it really is a mix. How many photos are there on your portfolio on Shutterstock and do you upload to iStock? Currently I have almost 6,000 photos on a Shutterstock and about 600, maybe 700 video clips. I don't currently upload to iStock, but I do have accounts on Alumi, Adobe, Big Stock Photo, and Pond5. Question, what was your dream when you were a teenager? Answer, well, I thought about this one for a while actually, and I didn't really have a dream when I was a teenager, like what I was gonna be when I wanted to grow up. When I was a kid, I wanted to, you know, be a vet or have an animal shelter. But as a teenager, I think I really just didn't know. For a while, I thought I'm going to go to medical school. I'm going to I'm going to be a doctor. But I think that's just something I said because it sounded like the good thing to do. Um, but when I do think back to my teenage years, I always had a camera with me, like a little point and shoot. I took it everywhere. I took tons of photos in school. I really annoyed everybody with my camera, but you know, you can see that that interest for photography was there and I just didn't know it yet. How much money have you invested into gear in say the last five years? Uh, kind of a lot, kind of a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I tried to calculate this the other day. It's kind of hard to come up with an exact number because there's always something you don't think about or that you forget, but it's probably around $25,000. Hopefully this YouTube channel will pick up a little more. Does a sophisticated camera determine the success or failing of selling photos on Microstock? I actually have a couple of videos that I would recommend you watch if this is something you're asking yourself. You can be a stock photographer with you know anything from a phone to a high-end camera. And whether you're successful or not successful really depends on the type of photos that you take, you know, the commercial value of your photos, whether those photos are in high demand or not. And it has less to do with what type of camera you're using. However, with that being said, you do want to have a camera that can meet the minimum technical requirements of the stock photography sites that you upload to. And you know, a better camera does help you sometimes produce better images, like in cases where you're doing night photography, like really low light photography, sometimes you might need something a little bit more advanced. I do sell photos that I have taken with my phone, but of course, when I have my camera with me, I will always use my camera. But anyways, I highly recommend that you check out this video right here to get a little bit more of an in-depth answer. Best lower risk type of paid shoots to start improving and learning to do well under pressure and in the spot without too many, without too much harm to the client when making mistakes. Okay, so you're a beginner photographer, you wanna get paid, but you don't wanna be in a high risk situation where messing up the shoot could be detrimental. Well, don't shoot weddings. That's all I can say. You don't want to mess up a wedding. Um, but if you're just starting out, I mean, I can tell you what my first shoots were. One of my first paid shoots was actually the graduation of a friend. And I basically took photos of her and her family after her graduation. There was plenty of time. There was no, you know, missing any moments because, you know, again, I had that time to spend with her and her family. You know, headshots are another one where you can really take your time and get those shots and you know if you're a beginner and you're just starting out and you want to get those shoots where you know there's less pressure then pick something where there's no moments that you can miss like where there's only moments that you can create so again 
not weddings. Some stock producers are claiming a huge downturn in sales recently. How are you doing? What do you consider a reasonable turnover these days? And do you think it is still possible to earn a living income with stock video or photography or supplementary only? Yeah, I know a lot of people are, you know, suffering a bit of a downturn. Actually, um, for me personally, uh, I've been sort of like on the rise, like my income has been increasing every month, but I think that's probably also because I'm still constantly uploading and increasing the size of my portfolio. Maybe if I just left my portfolio the same size it is and didn't upload anymore, like maybe I would see that downturn as well. Do I think it's possible to make a living from it? Well, I don't make a living from it. I pay probably about like half my rent with it, but I definitely could not survive off of stock photography. But making a living off of stock photography really depends, first of all, on what your expenses are and where you live. You know, if you live in Washington, D.C. or New York or L.A., like you have to make a lot of money to, you know, make a living off of stock photography. Um, but if you live in India or, I don't know, some other country where the cost of living is a little bit lower, then making a full-time income with stock photography is probably more realistic. Now, do I know people who make a living off of stock photography and videography? A few, a few, not too many, but the ones that do, they usually do a lot of video as well. But I don't know anybody making six figures. How many hats do you have? Will you ever do a video about your hats? And are you thinking of opening a museum of hats anytime soon? I love this question. It definitely made me laugh. Um, I have probably like, 40 or 50 hats but if you've watched these videos for a while you'll probably notice that I'm always wearing like the same three or four hats because everybody has their favorites and some hats look better on camera than others so I tend to usually just go for my favorite hats and yeah you know what I will consider opening a museum of hats one day what do you guys think of that when you sell videos is it mostly HD or 4k it's actually a mix. Um, obviously 4K video sales bring me more money than an HD video sale would, but I do sell HD videos and usually the HD videos I sell are more of like a editorial and like news clip or something where somebody really just needs that clip and you know, it doesn't matter if it's 4K or HD, they want that particular moment. If I have the chance to shoot in 4K, I will shoot in 4K, uh, but sometimes I'm using you know, an older camera or a different camera and I just don't have that clip in 4K. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna upload it, but 4K videos uh, do have the potential to bring in more money. I see you have been featured on Shutterstock in some of their blogs. This is great promotion. How did this happen? Did they discover your YouTube channel? Is it based on your volume? I've actually been featured on like three of their blog posts. One of them was about my YouTube channel actually, and it was, you know, the editor had discovered my videos on YouTube and she reached out to me and sent me a little Q and A and asked me to answer some questions. And, you know, I was happy to do that. And the other two blog posts that I was featured in, um, I don't think they had anything to do with my YouTube channel. They were just based on the photos that I guess popped up in search results. That's what I'm guessing. And so I primarily talked about uh, you know those specific photos. I don't think there's any sort of like method to get featured I think you know if your photos stand out in some way or get discovered by uh, the people who are writing the blog Like you might get an email from them one day I started my Shutterstock like at September and started posting many photos and my photo got sold But it was for 25 cents. My question is why does different photos sell for different amounts? Is there a reason for that? Yeah, there's actually uh, lots of reasons, you know. Check out this page right here, uh, which talks a little bit about the earnings tiers. When you're a new contributor, you will earn less on each photo download than when you, you know, have reached certain milestones. Uh, so definitely check that out. And clients also have the option to buy different licenses for your photos. So, you know, what you earn will also depend on the licenses purchased by clients. So like if somebody just wants to use one of your photos on you know, a little blog on their website or something, they're gonna have to pay less than if they want to, for example, I don't know, blow it up on a billboard in New York City somewhere. Are there many photographers that have only professional photography full-time as a reliable job or do most have a second job? Um, it's a mix, you know, 
there's plenty of photographers who do this full time. There's also photographers who do this part time. Um, personally, I am many things. I am a writer. I am a photographer. I have a nine to five job, and at that job, I do photography and writing. And then I also have a photography business outside of that job. Everything is possible. Is it possible to earn noticeable income from stock photos only, like $500 per month or higher? Um, it's possible. I typically earn more than that per month, but I can say for me that videos do contribute to a lot of that. And from photos only, you have to have a pretty big portfolio, typically, to make that much per month. Why are people so determined to shoot video with a photo camera since better video cameras exist from a long time ago? Well, in my case, I am primarily a photographer and video is secondary for me, so when I buy a camera and use a camera, um, I'm usually looking for a camera that has really good qualities and things that I need for photography purposes. And video, again, is secondary. Um, I like my Canon 5D Mark IV. It does shoot in 4K. And for me, that's all I need. But I can't really speak for anyone else. Can I use my Samsung Galaxy M30s for stock photography? Is it possible to sell pictures to Shutterstock on an iPhone 11 or $300? Canon camera. Absolutely. I actually just came out with a video about this. So instead of answering this, I'm just going to link to that video below. You can sell photos with your cell phones. And, you know, if you look through my comments, there's usually people that are talking about their successes selling their cell phone photos. You just have to have, you know, a little bit of a business mindset, creativity, and really know how to dominate your device. Is Instagram photography a niche like a professional photographer that markets their services to influencers on Instagram? Um, sort of. Like, I don't know of anyone who's a professional photographer for influencers, but I definitely know photographers who have done photo shoots for influencers. So it's definitely a thing. I actually do a lot of photography for local businesses who need these photos for their Facebook and Instagram pages. So I guess maybe that's related, but you can definitely go out there and market yourself as, you know, a photographer specializing in taking social media photos for people. And you know, when you're doing that, of course, you wanna keep a few things in mind, like what do you do differently when you're shooting for social media than when you would do in a normal shoot? Well, one thing is you gotta think about like dimensions, right? On Instagram, you wanna have photos that you can have in a vertical format. You know, maybe on Twitter or Facebook, you want photos in a more horizontal format. In some cases, you might wanna have squares. So when you're doing these like social media photo shoots, you wanna customize those shoots so that, you know, they can use those photos for a multitude of different platforms. But I also do think that a lot of, you know, so-called influencers, uh, they do take their own photos. A lot of them are really talented with cameras. Um, but yeah, in many cases, there are opportunities for photographers uh, to step in and do shoots for them. Yeah, so anyway, those are just a few questions I answered today. I don't want this video to be too long. There's a few more questions that I didn't answer that I will maybe use for a future video or maybe just a Q&A about stock photography in particular since like 70% of these questions were about stock photography. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this casual sit down with me. If you liked this kind of Q&A video, then feel free to leave some more questions below and I'll make another Q&A in the future. It definitely gives me ideas for things to talk about. So yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new here and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. As the end screen pops up, I just wanna say, it is so hard to find a quiet place to film videos sometimes, especially if you live in an urban area like me. Like, you know how many times I film that over and over because there's trucks in the background or honking horns or barking dogs or screaming kids. So if you live in a nice quiet area with lots of nature, appreciate that. <laughs>